Today we are going to do another build, but it's not going to be a regular build. Don't get me wrong, it's still a case, wow. and I'm still going to do a first, like, not very deep dive into it before I start working on the actual review, but this is not a regular case. This is the Silverstone Grandias 11, or GD11 on the website. <laughs> And already from the form of the box, you should see that this is not your regular PC case. This is, now you can see it, this is a very special form factor. This is for the type of people that need a, need a PC underneath their TV. Yeah, stereo shaped design, that's what Silverstone calls it. And maybe for a, a little media station, you wanna, you wanna have some movies on it and watch it from the TV. Or you want a game with a controller, like from your couch basically, or even keyboard. You have those those keyboards and mouse combinations that you can put on your lap. Never use them, never will use. But uh, you have those possibilities. And for those people who like to, to use a PC on their TV and have a media-shaped PC, the Silverstone Grandia 11. Now, it is definitely something different and we will need to rethink a bit about airflow path in here and all of the restrictions that come with this form factor. As you can already see, the case is not very high and yeah, the motherboard is on the lower end. So yeah, this is your potential air cooler, which means that this is definitely not an air cooler case. And if I remember the spec sheet correctly, it was like 146 millimeter high air coolers. So this is definitely not air cooler friendly. Oh yeah, I, I'm going to give Silverstone a bit of a bit of shit here. In the documentation they have, uh, they call this a dual chamber case because of this rail. Like this is not a a block. I, I can this is just a rail. Dual chamber. Yeah. And this is also quite cool because um, Silverstone did think a bit uh, when it came to this case. So you have this rail here which you may want or not want to install. But basically you can attach a bunch of hard drives to it. Take it out, here you got a, a hard drive cage where you can install, I would say right now, two. At least two hard drives or two SSDs, I guess. And then I'm pretty sure you have a bunch more SSD spots here. So you have some space. You can install some hard drives to make this a media station. Absolutely possible. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So in the front, we got two pre-mounted Silverstone fans, black ones, no RGB, three pin controls. Then we have two down here, two down here, where this one is actually for the power supply. So we got three fans on the sides and two 80 millimeter fans in the back. And then we have regular ATX uh, support, we got pretty long GPUs, because we, we have a long GPU for this, and yeah, all of that good stuff. Now, one thing that I haven't looked into too much, I already saw it in the documentation, which I just don't don't really get. You have this, you have this front here, right? It's a lot of mesh, that, that's nice, I like that. But if we remove it, yeah, like, the third one is just, let's just end, why, why is, why? I can... yeah... Why? <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't get it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? I, I know that it's going to restrict the GPU, but you, I mean, you don't force anybody to install a fan there. I, or, or people could still install like a slim fan, but uh, I mean, hey, it's their case, not mine. Uh, but let's go over the, the specs for the PC that we are going to build. So we are going AMD today. We are going to use a bit of an older CPU, the, the 5800X3D, but still 3D because we are building a basically a gaming PC for your TV. Then we got some conduit DDR4 RAM and SSD. And for the GPU, I was trying to go for the Phantom 4080 that I have because by my own guessing, this should... Oh yeah. This fits like on the millimeter. Ah. So, 4080, this, will go, this is going to be a great gaming PC. For the back, we have those, uh, these two 80mm fan spots, and I have these Arctic P8 silent lying around that they just sent over. Uh, review is coming, I just need to rebuild the whole machine, benchmarking machine, to have uh, smaller holes, but review for that is coming. So we got those fans, then for the other empty spots, I wanted to use the, uh, the ice pack thermal fans, because they are just great fans, and in combination with that, this case supports two 40 millimeter AIOs and the uh, Ice Flow Oasis 240, also from Icepack Thermal, is a pretty good AIO. So that's going into the front and I need to remove the two front fans. Now, one thing that is already going to, to annoy 
the hell out of me. This is more information for the review. So we got the, these two fan spots there. The problem is, uh, if I install RGB fans in there, you're going to see them shine through this mesh here, which is okay. The problem is that there is no third fan, so the whole RGB part will just like shine through here, and here it's going to be like pitch black. <sighs> okay, so we're going to use the original Silverstone fans instead of the Oasis fans, because otherwise it, it will just look awful, so no. Uh, we are going to, to swap out the fans. It, it will be awful to, to do that now. Yeah, I guess that's all. So, let's get going. Everything seems pretty easy so far. Let's install the motherboard in here. Oh, they only left the M80X spacers, I believe, yeah. Oh, I need to install more spacers. Why would you do that? Okay, attempt number two. Already one thing I can, I can tell you, the audio cable is just too short. Like, I would like to stuff it or going around the motherboard, because otherwise it's just like dangling here and it's too short to go around a ATX motherboard. Oh, what the hell. The joke is, if you put it sideways, it's like a regular PC, just like with the stupidest front intake I have ever seen. Okay, let's let's go to the power supply. So this is going to be here. Of course, lying flat, it's going to be on the side, but it's going here. And for the, that one, we got this incredibly hard to remove, uh, this fabric dust filter. It's basically a plastic sheet with a fabric behind it, a very meshy fabric. Oh, it feels nice. Anyway, that one is going here and in the documentation, Silverstone says that the power supply can't be longer than 180 millimeter, which I heavily disagree. It's just that after 180 millimeters, you will start to block off this fan. And you may or may not need it, but uh, there you go. You can do whatever you want, but if you want to use that additional fan intake, it's going to be 180 or less. Now, one thing I have to give to Silverstone, the installation so far incredibly easy. Like working in this, you have so much space in contrast to every case I have worked with in, in the last few weeks or months. So uh, yeah, this very, very enjoyable process. But now we'll come to the big question of the AIO. So we got a few possibilities here. The, the only place, so you, you got like 148 millimeter high air cooler. So that's just, no. The only place you can start in an AIO is in the front. You got a 240 spot here which is fine. The problem is, though, the whole RGB thing I mentioned in the beginning, you won't see it all across and it's just going to, to look awful. So I'm going to swap out the fans and then just install the AIO onto the original fans here. And yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, how will I do that with all of this cabling here? Well, let's maybe remove this cable for now, just so that we have the space to work with. And, and this audio cable. Anyhow, let's see the AIO. Yeah, I think I want tubes to the top. Do I want that? No, that will limit my fan possibility behind the power supply, so tubes down. That's okay, and yeah, something. Yeah, this seems fine. Now, attaching the radiator to here and that's pretty easy. We just remove the original screws and then we replace them with some radiator screws and yeah, there we are. And now we just need to hope that the original fans that Silverstone supplies with the case are somewhat good and, and then we are fine. Uh, but the, the good side is that we have so much space behind this radiator that in case they are not good, it is pretty easy to just smash another two fans and then you got a a uh, really impressive push-pull situation and yeah, I, I don't see a problem with that. So the last few steps left to do is fill the case with fans. A lot of fans essentially. One, two, three, four, five. Though two are like very, very small, but that doesn't really matter here. Four fans and then the GPU and then the case is done. I mean, I'm shocked how, how quickly this goes inside of this case. So let's just do the fans. And I already installed this one the wrong way. Oh, this is supposed to just like come off. You, you push it in this side. Oh, and then it's really easy to... Oh, I almost destroyed it. Oh. 
Yeah, my my bad. Oops. Okay, next two fans. And those are the new ones. So the two 80 millimeter exhaust fans. Uh, the only exhaust fans we got in this case. And for that I have those really freaking cute little P8 silence from Arctic. Look how cute they are. They are so small. Oh. Oh. Okay, I guess at this point just let me quickly uh, redo all of the cabling because right now it's a mess and then uh, then we will get to the GPU. One hour later. Uh, yeah, one thing I learned very quickly with this case is that cable management is uh, yeah, basically impossible. You have nothing where you can hide the cables, so you just end up with all of this here and all of them are... Yeah, this is horrible. I, I, I don't know if I should just blur that. The nice part is that once you are done with your monster, you can just close it off with this bracket again. So everything is going to be pushed down and hidden anyway. But yeah, cable management inside of the GD12 is, uh, yeah. So let's just install the GPU and close this thing as quickly as possible because I just can't look at it anymore. I, I did horrible stuff here. Very horrible cable management. I I'm so sorry. But I did it. it, it there is no place where you could smash those these cables in. It, it's just, yeah, it, it's going to be like that. Ah, let's close this. Oh, also nice fabric filter behind this here. Oh yeah, and of course you don't need that whole um, hard drive cage bracket thing. You can also just close the case. I mean, that that's fine. Oh, finally closed. I don't know how useful that is, but I, I just saw it. I will show you in a second. So here you got a little exhaust. Uh, which, which is kind of cool because it uh, covers partially the um, the GPU. So some of the air of the GPU can just escape through here, which is kind of cool because we got so much intake and so little exhaust essentially in here. So uh, yeah, that, that's kind of cool. But okay, this is the GD11 with my version of a media PC. With a 4080 and a 5800X3D. Yeah, so let's start it up. And let's see if it even boots. Yay! Okay, that was a uh, weird ride. So I have so many thoughts about this case. Now, the form factor is one thing. I mean, you either need something like this or you don't. And that's a, a whole topic on its own. But as like a general PC case standpoint, working in it is surprisingly easy, I would even say. It's just the cable management is just atrocious. There is nothing to, to squish anything anywhere. You have basically just two straps where you can install a bit, but as soon as an AIO is in the front, that's also gone. So uh, you are just stuffing stuff in there and it's just, it, it just looks horrible in the end. Now temperature wise, I run a few benchmarks, or just one benchmark essentially, because I'm gonna keep that for the final review because I have some thoughts. So running it as it is, so we have a 5800X3D paired with a Iceberg Thermal 240 millimeter AIO. Then we got the two original fans running the AIO. Keep that in mind because the fans are like kind of bad for AIOs. It's like 1300 RPM fans, so not really good. And then we have a bunch of our three uh, thermal iceberg 120mm uh, fans uh, as intake 1, 2 and 3 and the two 80mm arctic fans in the back as exhaust and running as is everything on auto and running Furmark at 4k the GPU hit 53 to 54 degrees C max which is very very fine very good uh, result probably because we have those two fans here just firing at the GPU so that's amazing and for the CPU we had 81 degrees C uh, on the package average after like 15 minutes that's technically fine, that's still like 9 degrees underneath uh, TJ Maxx for the 5800X 3D, but I think it's like very low considering the AIO, or very high considering the AIO, you get what I mean. 
Uh, and I think that is because of the fans. Uh, I used those original Silverstone fans and they are spinning at like 12, 1300 RPM max and that, that's just not enough for that AIO. So uh, yeah, I think we can get even more out of it. But the case allows for more. So you can push pull it and get even lower results or even have everything run even quieter. But that's more for the, for the review. Now, the reason I'm stopping benchmarking here is because it, it gets way more complicated at this point. To just give you uh, a brief idea of what's ahead of me. So the case is built or the case is designed with the idea that you have positive pressure. So you have more fans blowing in than blowing out, i.e. there is more air on the inside and you don't get, let's say, dust going in through the cracks and, and everything. This also means that the only exit that the case has is in the back. So we got the two 80 millimeter fans in the back that are pushing everything out, which in theory sounds fine. If you have this thing, for example, on a shelf or underneath a TV, you have, a let's say, an open space. Most of the air will come out in the back and some of it will exit here because you got that, that uh, situation where you have more fans blowing in than out. That's fine. The problem is what if you are a person that has one of those two core shelves with like a, uh, a box around. You know, you have a freaking hole and you put this inside, which is a very normal use case. Uh, some of those under TV type of shelves have those holes closed off by every side except for the front. If you have a box like that and you put this in, the air is going to blow out in the back, blow out in the top partially, and it's going to be trapped inside that box. After some time, it's going to be push to the front because there is more and more and more air getting in, it's going to travel to the front where it's going to get sucked in immediately. Same here, it's going to be sucked through the sides again, sucked in through the front again and you basically have a cycle at some point. So that's a concern and I would like to benchmark that to some degree for the actual review and just think about if this is the most intelligent setup or if pulling air in from every side and blowing it out in the front so that it doesn't get trapped in that cycle if that is maybe a better idea. But I will figure that out for the review. Now for today, I'm going to end it here. Building inside of the case was a very pleasant experience. Nothing to say there. I have some quality concerns, but I'm gonna keep those for the review. It's more like gluing stuff, which wasn't like perfectly glued. Uh, and, and like the overall usual, usual stuff. But for today, I'm going to leave it here. First experience building inside a uh, stereo shaped PC case was, was pretty good. Well, it was a, a good experience. But okay, thank you for watching and I hope you're going to stick around for the review which will be coming in probably like two weeks or three weeks. But until then, have a look at this build we did a while ago and uh, hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.